All right, folks, so I'm going to whip out one more video here about a topic which I think is very important, very timely. So um, this is a video about Nikki Haley and her supposed gaffe and her supposed word salad about uh, what the causes were of the Civil War. Now, I realize that this is published after the South Carolina primary, but I don't think it's going to matter because I don't think that the uh, issue was really uh, discussed uh, as to what um, were the causes of slavery. It never really made the national consciousness. What instead made the national consciousness was someone accusing Nikki Haley of essentially ignoring slavery when it came to uh, the cause of the Civil War. And I, I thought about this um, yesterday. It came to mind, and I, it's one of the things that's kept coming to mind for me over the years, especially as I got older and more um, critical <laughs> of life in the United States, let's say, to be honest. Um, people like to talk about civil rights and so forth in this country. We had the, we've, we've had a revolution in this country in the sense of talking about civil rights. Um, but I think it's important to remember that that revolution did not come easily or without any bloodshed. And to me, what was really inconsistent about the whole uh, idea of the Civil War being caused by slavery, and this is something that's kind of crept up on me over the years, um, the more you read about uh, racism in this country, which I do still falter for, for basically not having um, mentioned, okay? Uh, when, some, when she was asked whether the United States was a racist country and she said no, and I, that's a whole other um, video which I don't want to get into because this is sort of cascading and I'm having to stop it right basically at these two um, situations that she ran into in, in New Hampshire. <clears throat> one about the Civil War and slavery, the other about um, quote-unquote flip-flopping over Donald Trump, which I will, I will touch base on um, at the very end of this video. There's so much more to get to before we talk about her flip-flopping on Trump. Or, okay, why not? Let's talk about now. So let's just say, okay, it doesn't make sense to criticize her for flip-flopping on Trump when just about every GOP politician flipped up, uh, flopped on Trump one way or the other. Um, he won especially talking about eight years ago. We're not talking about, you know, the last couple of years, we're talking about her quote unquote flip-flopping eight years ago. The, the kid who said it, uh, all this about her um, essentially uh, said that it was eight years ago. And um, he says, he's, he's talking about how he agrees with Chris Christie and uh, Dickie Haley says that Chris Christie is essentially um, obsessed with Donald Trump. And he, and he has been, he's, he was obsessed with Donald Trump back when uh, he first campaigned for the presidency against Trump and could not hit him hard enough to make a dent in his popularity, uh, but did essentially uh, bow out of the election saying that Donald Trump was the worst thing for the Republican Party that it's ever seen. And so th I, I really don't want to get into that too much. I'm just trying to cover that quickly um, by uh, summary. The... The election of 2016 uh, was a very different election than 2020 and is a very different election than 2024 because Donald Trump had not won any kind of political office in 2016, but in 2020, he had a, a record. He had a record as a politician and his record as a politician was essentially just being president for four years, okay? Not like any other politician, you know, in the Senate or the Congress, where they have an extensive record in Congress or as a governor or, or as a senator. Okay. Trump essentially had no record whatsoever except for his political speeches that he made uh, before the election. So, and also the fact that he was a Democrat before he switched parties. So I think for a lot of people, um, especially after eight years of Obama um, and all the criticism about Obama and Hillary Clinton and so forth. I think for a lot of people, that issue was a lot more um, pliable, that the party had lists, had really no 
substantial objection for getting behind Trump, especially going into the, um, to the election, the general election. So it's not totally surprising to find that Nikki Haley, um, as a, um, rep- a GOP member, was going to get behind Trump for the presidential election. Going into 2000 is a different story. And I think a lot of people came out of 2000, out of the, the, um, Trump's first term in office with some serious reservations about him as uh, president. And, and I think that they, we, were, we were even surprised by how cogent and, and, um, and prescient those, those changes were. Now, if you want to call people a flip-flopper for supporting Trump you know, in um, 2016, but not supporting him in 2020, that's fine. But you know, most people in this country are not nine years old, okay? And I think most people in this country are not looking for a soundbite to plug into this to this election. Um, and I I can't see anyone taking the fact that she that this guy called her John Kerry too seriously. And that's already like three minutes on the issue. Trust me, the issue of slavery when it comes to um, the cause of the Civil War is far far deeper than her just changing her opinion on Trump and literally running against him in 2024. Um, The problem is that she was attacked for not saying slavery at all during her explanation of what the cause of the Civil War was. And I'd like to go ahead and just play that now. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Please, um, what was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? I'm sorry? I'm not running for president. I, 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 I wanted to see uh, your view on the cause of the Civil War. I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government and what the rights of the people are. And we, I will always stand by the fact that I think government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. Government doesn't need to tell you how to live your life. They don't need to tell you what you can and can't do. They don't need to be a part of your life. They need to make sure that you have freedom. We need to have capitalism. We need to have economic freedom. We need to make sure that we do all things so that individuals have the liberties, so that they can have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do or be anything they want to be without government getting in the way. Thank you. And in in the year 2023, it's astonishing to me that you answer that question without mentioning the word slavery. What do you want me to say about slavery? No, um, uh, you've answered my question. Thanks. Next question. So the, the pictures I wanted to put in were the story in the New York Post about how Haley made a gaffe during the town hall event in Berlin where she talked about the, um, or answered the question, what was the cause of the Civil War? And the guy who was asking her the question says, I can't believe that you went through all this, all this talk and never to mention the word slavery in 2023. And I think that that's a good thing to look at in of itself. Why should she have mentioned it? Okay. Let's be honest. Why would you ever expect a Republican candidate in 2024 to mention slavery at all? Okay. The, the bigger question that we have out of this whole issue is what do people think that the president should mention in such a question or such a scenario? Why should, why should the president, a presidential candidate even bring up slavery or bring up the civil, the civil war? So if, if someone throws that question at them, um, I think that the, the response that she gave was actually a pretty politically wise response, which was to avoid talking about the Civil War as much as possible, or talk about it as little as possible, and to talk about slavery, uh, not even touch that as part of the, the cause. And, and the problem is, it's not just a politically wise thing to do, which apparently somebody had issues with, okay? But 
it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about the history of the Civil War. Now, the problem is everyone who's looking at this issue needs to look at this and say, what the hell do you actually think was the cause of the Civil War? Okay, and let me tell you something. I haven't really looked at the history, the background history of the Civil War since I was in grade school. That was a while ago. And this is basically what I was taught about the history of the Civil War in grade school, okay? But as an adult, we all should take a moment of our time to go research the Civil War online ourselves and not worry about so much about what we were taught to think or what is politically correct to think in our environment, whatever that may be, Northerners, Southerners, East Coasters, uh, Midwesterners, West Coasters, you know, Kansas residents, Missouri residents, South Carolina residents. And Haley's the South Carolina, you know, resident, born and raised, I guess, born at least and raised in South Carolina. So now the South Carolina is a certain particular um, prime spot in this whole equation, considering that the um, Port of Charleston is where Sun uh, Fort Sumner is. And the Civil War started when uh, the governor of South Carolina, I believe, I guess it was, I'm not sure, um, decided to attack Fort Sumner. Okay, as it was a federal fort at the time. The Confederate Congress has issued a proclamation. Any Negro taken in arms against the Confederacy will immediately be returned to a state of slavery. Any Negro taken in federal uniform will be summarily put to death. Any white officer taken in command of Negro troops shall be deemed as inciting servile insurrection and shall likewise be put to death. Full discharges will be granted in the morning to all those who apply. Dismissed. Dismissed. If you're not here in the morning, I understand. You don't want that blue suit, nigga? The point is, and I'm just going to do this just to cover what the details, I mean, the, uh, the amount of details are, okay? If I go through, I didn't put any pictures in about the kid in, in talking about the flip-flopping because that was all so fairly obvious uh, as an issue. Um, it just wasn't a, a real issue. Lots of people changed their opinion about Trump, you know, Flip-flopping relative to eight years ago, not even a concern at this point to anyone except the word John Kerry. If you had said that, probably would never have made the news. Um, okay, so uh, her answer, and in summary down here, it was never meant to be all things to all people. The government, he's, he's talking about the government, the First Amendment, um, of the Constitution, I'm sorry. Um, the federal government was never meant to be all things to all people. You could say that about any government. Uh, we have this issue now with socialism, we have this issue now with these migrants getting $10,000 because um, the uh, mayor of New York City, um, Eric Adams, I think his name is, has decided that it's much more efficient for the government to just give these people money to go out and buy food and buy a place to live and, and buy their clothing and stuff than for the government to buy it and give it to them, okay? And arguably that makes sense, except for the whole uh, look of it. You know, the government is giving these people free money if they come to the United States and sneak across the border and, and apply for immigration and then stay here for the 10 years or so that it's gonna take for immigration, for their immigration hearing to, to come up and be processed and then rejected and then deported, okay? So it, it doesn't look good and everybody's freaking out about it because it's just like, you know, open season in the United States. Um, the fact is we already have similar programs in the United States for single mothers. We have them in Maryland. Um, mothers, uh, you know, people who, who are homeless uh, can apply to the government to get uh, housing assistance or even housing, actual housing, um, without really making much of a financial contribution to it. I just, we, we have socialist programs in the United States, but we have a people a bunch of people in this country who deny that the United States is socialist. I mean, they're fighting about socialism in the, in the last election. You know, we don't want socialism. Socialism is bad. Look what socialism ruined Russia, all this kind of shit. Russia was not a socialist country. Russia was a communist country. Completely different concept. 
Um, but these, but there are people here who literally don't understand the details, but love to rail about the issue. They don't know what they're talking about, but they count as much as every other voter counts. And this, my friends, is why she mentioned, in my opinion, why she mentioned the um, minimalist philosophy of um, the federal government and indeed government as a whole as it should be a minimal effect, a minimal influence in the lives of the citizens. And this is classic Republican dogma, okay? You don't hear that from Trump. You don't hear any of this from Trump because Trump only wants to talk about the things that his audience doesn't like about government. It's not that they don't like um, uh, health care, government provided health care, for instance. It's not that they don't like having a strong military. There's just things about how it's being used or how it was written. They're, they're, the main issue about Trump's um, support is that these people are arguing about details, okay, but missing the larger issue of the guy running the government is a crook, a, a, just a hardcore crook. Whole different problem, okay? From what Haley is saying, the basic issue with the federal government and Republican perspective of the federal government is that you have minimal government. That is classic Republican dogma. Um, but this also feeds into the cause of the Civil War, and it certainly was one major issue that caused the war. State rights versus the federal government, the powers and authority of the federal government. And there was a huge huge problem behind the, um, the start of the Civil War. So don't, get, don't forget this wrong. This will come up many, many times in what I'm about to say here. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, government doesn't need to tell you how you live your life, doesn't need to tell you what you can and cannot do. They don't need to be part of your life. They need to make sure that you have freedom. Now this is where minimalist philosophy breaks down because it does indeed do that. Um, the sheer fact that we have a constitution, we have a bill of rights, does do that, okay? Uh, when people say, you know, you have your First Amendment rights, you have the right to free speech, that also implies certain responsibilities and obligations and restrictions. So it, those restrictions do tell you how to live your life. They do tell you what you can and can't do. It's, it's just the nature of the government that we have. But the question is, do we have a lot of it or do we have a little of it? Just with Roe versus Wade where... Um, this supposed right to an abortion was overturned because it was never actually uh, written into the Constitution. There's nothing in the Constitution that says people have uh, the right to have an abortion. So the, I think in a rare, fairly reasonable manner, the, um, the new Supreme Court uh, swept aside Roe versus Wade and left the issue of abortion up to the states. And that just kicked the can down the road. And this is, this is where we have this huge problem with the cause of the Civil War. And I'm just going to come out right and say it. I don't think it was slavery per se. I think slavery was part of the underlying tension. But to get to the chase, the ultimate cause of the Civil War, in my opinion, was a matter of honor between the Northerners, the Southerners, the abolitionists, uh, the, the federal government, the people who believed in a strong federal government with control over the states, and the people who believe in the states had individual rights to, to do as they please, and slave owners who wanted to make sure they had the basic right to control their property. Just as it was the um, abolitionists who wanted to see um, slaves treated as human beings with freedoms and the right to vote. However, that issue had already been decided well before the Civil War, okay? The Dred Scott decision basically nullified the black um, person's uh, role as a citizen of any sort. Okay, if you, if you look at this decision, you go and look in Wikipedia at the Dred Scott decision, you, you will see that it basically set this country on fire in certain ways. It just basically uh, real, just rolled over any argument that minorities had to be treated as citizens in the United States. Um, anyway, so, um, 
As I said, the individual who posed the question to the candidate responded that it was astonishing to hear her answer without mentioning the word slavery. No, it wasn't. Surprise, it, it, it was actually, I would have been very surprised if she had mentioned slavery in that response. Um, but that's just my perspective. Um, so let's go on. So the big thing that I, I want to post about these particular um, comments is not necessarily the comments that she made, but how people flipped out about it. <laughs> okay. And it, it brings to mind how, at least according to the historical record, how people flipped out about the comments that were being made about slavery at the time in, in the 1850s and 1860s. Um, Biden, Biden's ex account, it was about slavery. Uh, Democratic National Committee Chancellor Jamie Harrison tweeted, the answer was not stunning if you were a black resident in South Carolina when she was governor. And it, it, again, not stunning, period. I don't think a lot of people would have chosen to make any reference to slavery at all if they could avoid making it. Um, same person said the Confederate flag was about tradition and heritage. There was a minority woman. She was the right person to defend it, keeping it on statehouse ground. Some may have forgotten, but I haven't. Time to take off the rose-colored glasses. Nikki Haley, um, about Nikki Haley, folks. Yeah, okay. But, but to criticize her for being a South Carolinian and acting like a South Carolinian is like criticizing your daughter for putting makeup on when she's five years old, you know, or criticizing somebody else's daughter for putting makeup on when she's 15 years old. It's a personal decision. It's, it's a regional characteristic. I don't think that this says that she isn't something who's a good, credible candidate. This is a, a fairly normal response for most um, politically aware and um, race aware people in the South. You just don't talk about these things. Trust me, it's not just women who do that. A lot of blacks in the South also will avoid talking about slavery. And this guy, God knows why he's actually bringing it up now. I mean, you know, same thing. Um, Representative Dean Millips, Democrat, Minnesota, running for the Democratic nomination president as a very fringe candidate. Sorry, Haley, the Civil War was about slavery, period. Just wrong. Just not right. Not at all. Christina Pushaw, DeSantis's rapid response coordinated, mocked Haley's convoluted answer, describing it as word salad regarding the Civil War. It wasn't, if it was word salad, it was more about the, the difference between states' rights and federal authority. It wasn't about the Civil War. It, we still have the same discussion today. It, we've had the discussion forever, okay? We, the Civil War did not resolve the issue of states' rights. You still have people in this country today talking about states' rights. Um, Texas right now is, is having a states' right argument about the border. So um, that's just not it's just not sensible response. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, okay, so this part here about John Kerry, we'll put that at the front. Um, since I talked about John Kerry first, uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, so all these go in the front. Uh, we've already talked about them by this time. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just not editing this stuff down. I'm just putting it in and we'll go with it. Uh, just way too much time to edit this all down. Um, okay, so it, it leads into, from the John Kerry thing, leading into um, Haley made the remarks while fighting major backlash over her failure to mention chattel slavery as a chief cause of the Civil War in response to an audience question at a Berlin town hall Wednesday night. Now, I think that one uh, journalist decided to talk about chattel slavery versus slavery. Okay. If you think there's a difference between those two things, okay. But um, because that was one of the major issues about slavery in the, in the whole run up to the Civil War. Um, we have to keep in mind, and I think a lot of people in the South um, at the time um, were offended by the idea of slave owners having sex with their slaves. I mean, that was right in and of itself one of the reasons why a senator, a U.S. senator, was physically attacked in the Senate after making a speech um, accusing a member of uh, his opposition of engaging in sex with his slaves, 
okay? The, the guy's nephew physically went to the Senate and physically beat the shit out of this guy on the Senate floor, okay? And, and this gets to me like a, to a, a larger issue is how, of all the stuff that people talk about with regards to the run-up to the Civil War, what parts of it involved violence? And what parts of it were just discussion and um, debate and so forth? And I think that's, it's important to realize that you're probably not gonna actually start a war about things that, where you're happy just talking about it. But you're much more likely to start a war about things where you're actually ready, ready to actually fight over them. And so when you talk about Kansas and Missouri, um, those are actual, you know, wars, <laughs> you know, um, skirmishes, whatever you want to call it, but still wars. Um, Fort Sumner, definitely a, an attack. But when did people ever begin to act like they were actually going to fight a war over slavery? Okay. No, they fought a war over the right to have slaves, over the fact that they had slaves, and some people were trying to, send, to essentially take their slaves from them. These are property issues. The, the other issue is, you know, how do you have sex with property unless that property is a human being? And so, yeah, it became a big issue to, to say that they were not just slaves, but they were also, also treated as sexual play toys by the um, slave owners. And then the slave owners would come back and say, how dare you accuse me of having sex with a nigger? <laughs> this is the next thing they would say, okay? And, and then want to physically attack the people that said this about them, even though it was largely true. I mean, even though it was codified into law at the time, that any black that was at least one quarter black was a slave. I mean, these are things that have been talked about for a long time. God, if you talk about the history of slavery going back into the Roman times and back before the birth of Christ and so forth, you don't even want to know the shit that these people would do, okay, to their slaves. And on top of that, not just their slaves, but also men in the army, in the military, would do, um, men in the Navy would do, it was just, it was just ridiculous. Okay. So I, yeah, I can see a lot of people not wanting to, to bring that up because it was a common thing. So, um, I hadn't even gotten to this point where I was talking about that. I was really just kind of an open mind and I went to Wikipedia yesterday and started looking in, um, causes of the civil war. I just, you know, typed it in. Now, as, as you see here, this is, this is the link for the American Civil War, not causes of the war. On the left, there are a lot of categories, subcategories under this. One of them is um, causes of succession, okay? The outbreak of the war, um, then more into the history of the actual war itself. So you can go through, if you want, I don't know, you see the, the little gray bar in the top right there? Um, that bar goes slowly <laughs> as you go through um, all of these these things. Okay, uh, so I skipped the last four fifths of that bar, right? Just going through these right here, maybe ten, right? So you're talking about maybe a hundred pages that they discuss this, um, just in in the war itself. So you go to the category that says origins of the Civil War. Now this is the part that I looked at yesterday and this is the part that I was like, oh, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. I kind of knew this, I didn't know that. But what the one thing I didn't really know about is the Dred Scott decision. I was a little bit um, uh, fuzzy about the, um, the um, Compromise of 1850 and the Kansas-Nebraska Act and so forth, which are basically that every, every state south of some particular um, Longitude, uh, latitude was going to be a slave state and um, the idea that uh, the, the compromise of 1850 being that, slave, that states would come in one slave, one free, one slave, one free. So these are all attempts to, um, to mitigate the issue of slavery versus um, free states 
in the United States, considering that when the, um, the country started, um, the 13 colonies, some of them were slaves and some of them were free. So um, both sides um, found a compromise uh, in, in this uh, idea of bringing states into the uh, Union, one slave, one free, and so on. I don't remember, and I looked at this yesterday, I don't remember a lot of the details in this, but I did skim over a lot of it. And I had heard about the Dred Scott decision. I never really looked at it in detail, but there was a section in here that caught me by surprise about the, the Dred Scott decision. And I won't say it was the cause of this philosophy, but it definitely was, I would say, a judicial um, uh, c cementing it into our national uh, system of law and order that essentially uh, you really should look at that decision. If you're going to look at any part of this, you should look at, look at the Dred Scott decision because the Dred Scott decision essentially declared blacks as a subspecies of whites and distinct from whites and in no way, shape or form deserving or capable of managing or using in any way the freedoms and the rights of white Americans. Okay, I looked at this about 15 minutes ago, I looked at it again, I tried to find the, the quote, it was a quote from the, the Chief Justice Taney, basically said, blacks are, are animals and in no way uh, are they um, deserving or qualified to be treated uh, as United States citizens. And I, I, I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, the, he literally, they literally, it, that wasn't actually part of the decision. I think the decision obviously is much larger than a few pages as covered in this. Um, but supposedly it was a quote uh, attributed to him as a separate thing. Now, the, the thing that you have to remember is that a lot of these people who were separationists or, or white supremacists and so forth, they wrote a lot of articles in defense of the philosophy that whites and blacks were separate species and one was completely um, subject, you know, sub, um, inferior to the other and that slavery was actually a good thing for them and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if you know a lot about that whole train of thought, but that's something that, you know, it's been going on for a long, long time in this, in this planet for many, 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 many thousands of years. People have been justifying, rationalizing, and even celebrating slavery. So, um, you know, if you can take my word on this for right now, or you can, you know, go talk to your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents, or whatever. Um, not even going to get into that argument, okay? Just trust me, it's a, it's a well, well, well developed argument. Um, so, the point is that the Dred Scott decision essentially solidified that perspective in American law, okay? Uh, I, I hesitate to even try to summarize it um, beyond that, but the point is essentially that blacks did not have the right to apply to the court. For judicial relief that was the summary okay and at that point technically slavery was a the sun a decided issue in the united states okay the problem is what happened is from there you have the left wing you know the new republican party the abolitionists and so forth um basically rejecting that whole concept rejecting that whole decision okay and just saying, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we're going to do the other. And then you had the southern um, part of the side of the equation saying, well, wait a minute. Now, all this time, you've been telling us the federal government is the one that, that rules the, the land. That the, land the, the laws of the land are decided by the federal government. And even if the states don't agree with it, they still have to submit to those, those um, federal um, decisions. And we've had many, many federal decisions about um, the issue of slavery, but you guys didn't want to actually follow them. So if there's a problem here, it's not the, no the South basically not following the law. It's, I mean, it's the North not following the law. 
And our issue is that you, you people need to actually say you're going to follow the law, whether state rights or federal rights. You basically just ignore any law you don't like. That's what the whole thing really became in the end. Um, but I think the, the issue of property rights and um, the promulgation of slavery throughout the United States was not really the, the issue. I think it came down to morals and ethics and therefore a question of honor. Um, religious conflict over the slavery question, uh, the territorial crisis in the Constitution, abolitionism, um, arguments for and against slavery, the free soil movement, um, which is basically that no, no um, soil in the state is going to be toiled by slaves, that all the work will be done by freedmen. Um, slavery questioning territories coming from Mexico, that would be Texas. Um, States rights in slavery, uh, again, more, became much more of an issue of property rights. Um, uh, minority rights was essentially an issue of the uh, white minorities in terms of politics and, and moral and ethics, ethical views, not a matter of uh, racial minorities, for sure, just not even a factor at this point. Uh, fugitive slave laws, um, basically that uh, uh, Southerners had the right to go to the North and reclaim their fugitive slaves, whereas the, um, the general tendency at that time was that once the um, slaves made it to the North, they were free and couldn't be recaptured and taken back into the South. And again, it goes right in the face of uh, property laws. Um, Kansas and Nebraska Act, I don't really care, honestly. Um, the other interesting thing was this idea that um, the two dominant parties in the United States at the time both fractured, um, that the um, Northerners uh, developed the Republican Party out of this as a uh, less liberal um, position relative to the abolitionists, and that the Southerners um, essentially abandoned the Whig Party and started the Democrats as a result, and likewise a less radical uh, pro-slavery um, political group. They, they really got their shit together, honestly, if you look at the history here in Wikipedia, and kind of cornered the, um, the Northerners on this issue and, and to the point where you basically said, they basically said, you respect our property rights or we're going to succeed. And essentially that's what happened. Um, so uh, there I talked about the Dred Scott decision. You know, you know these things are relatively different orders, but there are a lot of, as you see, a lot of different subcategories to this one particular issue. And so to talk about honor, I think this is where it really comes down to. I think if there's one thing that would make people, white people in this country fight, okay, it's got to be a question of honor. I just do not see at all any way that the white majority in this country would go to war over slavery over slavery in and of itself, okay? I think this went way past just the basic issue of slavery to the issue of whether um, slave owners had any respect from abolitionists and freedom fighters about having slaves in the first place. I think that was the fundamental issue that made it, this war actually happen. So, um, okay, you know, not mention the word slavery at all, you know, no, I don't, I don't think it was necessary to mention the word slavery, but I definitely think it could have been mentioned. And I think I can see how some people would have mentioned it, but I don't necessarily say that it can't be discussed without mentioning slavery. And I don't think we get a big shit about the fact that she didn't mention the word slavery at all is really even, you know, even mature. It, it, it's just not mature when you start to talk about the president I don't think that too many people would have taken that as an opportunity to, to go off into the weeds about slavery, like you could say that I just did, but I can also see how some people would say, well, you know, we talk about slavery as, uh, um, as contributing to the, to, the, to the war, okay? Um, she, she, yeah, okay, fine, you know, um, you could say it was a contributing factor, but again, I don't think con slavery was a factor I think it was the morality question, the ethics, and the impinged honor of people who supported it, and also the people who, who were against it. Um, 
that really lit the fuse of the Civil War, really got it going. If, if those issues had not been brought up, if for some reason, somehow, um, the, the North and the South could have been civil, genteel, not gone for the throat on a lot of these issues, um, we would not have had a war. I mean, things would, have, things would not have been ideal, let's say, but they wouldn't have actually gone to war over it. And um, that is part of the whole issue is you have the entire country essentially sending its sons to war to fight over slavery is just a far-fetched idea. But to go to war to defend their states, their families, their way of life, um, their system of, of uh, law and justice, and their property, yeah, I could see that happening. So, so, the, so it, it really brings out this you know, this, this layer of politics, yeah, over the issue of slavery. But once you wipe that away and look at the actual um, issues, they're way deeper than slavery. It's, it's, just, it's just not even a question. Um, you don't kill 560,000 people in your own um, country over whether or not um, blacks should be slaves or not when 95% of them don't even think of blacks as people to really worry about um, and, and don't see a problem with having a slave at all. The, the, the whole issue is about slavery is more a question of how much do you think they should be slaves than whether they should be slaves at all. Um, so anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, Southern chivalry argument versus clubs. Uh, this guy is a U.S. senator the, in the, the black uh, suit lying on his back. Um, and then the other guy is the nephew of the U.S. Um, representative who was accused basically of using his slaves as, play, as sexual play toys. And this guy came up and literally bit the shit out of this guy over that, over that very statement. Um, all right, uh, more of the highlights of um, the details. John Brown, um, the irony of this John Brown thing is that um, a lot of the Southerners had given an earlier um, uprising in the Caribbean as an excuse for not freeing the slaves because they were afraid that the, the freed slaves would get arms and go come back and massacre all the, um, the white slave owners. Uh, John Brown was kind of the opposite where um, he led a, uh, a raid on Harper's Ferry to get weapons to incite um, an uprising among the slaves um, for not being um, freed obviously. And uh, so it was kind of funny that there was a damned if they do, damned if they don't um, feeling that came out of this. And that should sound pretty familiar with anyone who's really aware of um, American politics today. There's two sides to everything. There's a, a curse and a benefit to just about everything that we do now. Um, so then the election in 1860 were, um, I think that's where Lincoln was elected. Um, yeah. A lot of people talk um, about this election as if Lincoln was the, the um, unpopular candidate and uh, he only won the war through some kind of uh, political uh, back party or back room uh, politics or something. No, um, Lincoln was the dominant candidate in that election um, because of the split between the North and the South and a split in the Northern politics and in Southern politics, there were actually um, four major candidates for president. And Lincoln won more electoral votes than the other candidates combined. The popular vote is a different story. Okay, yeah, so, but we know that. I mean, we, we know that in some states, the popular vote is um, more um, powerful than the, the electoral vote. In some states, it's the other way around. Um, the larger the states are, the more uh, uh, voters they have, the more that the electoral vote lags slightly below the popular vote in terms of um, electoral power. And that's um, pretty common. The problem is that it's never really tended to drift dramatically away from the popular vote. So in essence, um, the whole electoral college 
um, being replaced by um, the popular vote argument has never really carried any win because in general, in the long run, um, the electoral vote strongly represents the popular vote. And, <laughs> and what happened in 2000 is just more icing on the cake. If we didn't have electors to represent the, um, the state vote, then the vote for president would completely come out of the vote for the popular vote. And God knows what kind of shit would happen. If you looked at what happened in 2000, it's just, or is that right now, 2020, um, it's just mind boggling the shit that happened coming out of the popular vote where we have a president accusing the, the deep state of stealing his election, his reelection for president, while he is manipulating the electoral college so that he wins. Okay, just insane, the shit that Trump has been doing. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's not gonna change anytime soon. Uh, all right, so all in the long run, um, Basically, I could talk about Dred Scott first, I guess, but I put it here at the end. So yeah, there's, you know, I should probably get to Dred Scott um, you know, in the beginning of the talk about the, the cause of the Civil War. But um, the, sh the, the, the shit that this guy had to go through to get rejected by the Supreme Court for even having the physiological tools required to submit an appeal to the Supreme to, to the judicial system in the first place is just mind boggling. They actually ruled that he literally had no standing to submit any complaint, any complaints about his um, enslavement because he was only good to be a slave. That was his only real good purpose in life. That was the argument. Just mind boggling. Um, now, uh, yeah, I can see how that would um, start a national discussion about race, which um, Nikki Haley dis determined was, you know, not a problem in this country whatsoever, that there is no racism whatever in this country. <laughs> I, I mean, how do you get from this to there's no racism in the United States? How do you get from this? To, the, to, to saying there's no racism. It only makes sense if you literally deny the existence of racism in this country. It's not a problem, it's just a consequence. Um, that I, I, I still think she should be hung out to dry on, I'll be honest with you. But again, look, you're talking about people from Southern states and people from Southern states don't necessarily want to get into these discussions. They just don't. There are people who do and there are people who don't. That's just how it is. Is it right? Is it wrong? Should we be talking about racism in a country where we're talking about being essentially race neutral, um, having affirmative action rolled back, all these kind of things? We're, we don't, we, there's a lot of people in this country who don't want to talk about race. It's that simple. They don't, they don't think that race is the problem. They think it's some other you know, social economical issue. But this decision wraps up every division between Europeans and lower races into genetics. I don't even know if they even had genetics at the time, but it wraps it all up into genetics and says, hey, you've got black skin, you deserve to be a slave. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's just mind boggling. But this was socio, the social norm in a lot of places. The Irish had the same problem with the English. The Scots had the same problem with the English. The uh, Palestinians had the same problem with the Jews. The, uh, the Islamic people have, in Syria had the same problem compared to the Europeans in the lands where they go uh, to, as um, um, refugees. This has been the way the world has been for eons. That people who were in superior positions in life were genetically disposed to be masters of the people who were in inferior positions. This is not a new thing. And it, I don't see how this could possibly would have caused 
the so-called superior race to go to war just because people disagreed with it. This, there, but this has been happening for a long, long time. So um, anyway, so back again, um, like I said, there are a lot of different authors who wrote on this topic. Uh, this is, you know, um, right, Dred, Dred Scott himself. Hey, this is a, a noted defender of slavery. You know, um, it's just it's just sad that we're still talking about slavery in the Civil War. That somebody would bring it up in 2024. Um, but you know, that's that's the pistol to the head of the world of the of the state of the United States. Everybody's worried about you know something causing us to have another revolution or another um, uh, civil war or another insurrection. Everyone is now worried about that because our fucking 45th president inspired an insurrection just so he could stay in office and it still failed. And everybody is worried that it might happen again. That's how I see it. 